I, I remember the first time I went in the store, right after Malia was born. I, I was like, what? That's how much diapers cost? You think Donald Trump ever changed the diaper? <laughs> I almost said that, but I decided I shouldn't say it. Hello, everyone. This is JVL here with my colleague from the Bulwark, A.B. Stoddard. A.B., Barack Obama just wrapped up a big old event in Pennsylvania where new swing state polling shows Kamala Harris losing ground. But we'll just we'll put that aside for for tonight. Uh, he came on stage after Governor Josh Shapiro and Senate candidate Bob Casey. What did you think? Well, Obama is a great surrogate and a great speaker, but I found him tonight laundry listing because the campaign feels very much that it needs to introduce this mysterious Vice President Harris to the voters who still don't know enough about her and they can't take the leap. They might not leave the House on Election Day to vote for Trump because they haven't gone in with him. But they just don't know if they can trust her and they just don't know what she's about. And they just don't know if she'll turn things around or be more of Biden's high prices. So there's a feeling in these speeches that you're getting all this clunky filler about her. And it's a way they believe that that they can land Harris with people who still don't know if they can trust her, et cetera. So it was not high energy in that way. There were great moments, I thought. I think that he spoke about tariffs. His other big economic plan now is to slap tariffs on everything, from food to TVs. Now, understand what tariffs are. Anything that's coming from out, that, that's made elsewhere and comes here, you slap extra money on top of it. And the economy that he left Donald Trump, and that's why it was humming along. And the reason some people think, well, I don't know, I remember that economy when he first came in being pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good, because it was my economy. He spoke about that, I think, better than most Democrats have been on the stump for Harris. I would like to hear more um, up talk about, like, you think prices are high now, you ain't seen nothing yet, um, what he has planned for you. I think there was there were some really good moments like that, but it was lower on really high energy kind of offense on Trump. And, and, and it was more focused again on sort of like giving you the brochure. And I know they feel that that's important. It's just that we're down to the wire and what we want is for him to, to really, I think, sort of just, you know, break Trump in half. Um, that I mean, she doesn't, she doesn't want to do that. That's why I want every single surrogate of hers to be doing that. He did so suggest that answer. Donald Trump wears diapers. Was that not enough for you? <laughs> no, it wasn't <laughs> enough. He almost said it. Yeah. I, uh, you know, it's, Barack Obama's very good. As you say, his his thing is not my thing, but uh, but I recognize the very powerful. He's a very good speaker. Uh, that's not even good enough. He's he's a truly great speaker. Um, not not just very good. The thing that I found interesting, though, is that the the overall theme that he used and that Walls has used that she has used is that Trump is not for you. He's for himself. Yeah. And so this must be testing well for them because he, you know, he, he had, he talked, he brought up January 6th, but why did he bring up January 6th? He brought up January 6th so that he could quote Trump from the, uh, as Trump was watching the TV and saw they were going after Mike Pence where he said, who cares? And he said, if Trump doesn't care about his own vice president, do you think he cares about you? Donald Trump was told that M Mike Pence was in the Capitol about 40 feet from an angry mob chanting, hang Mike Pence. And his response was, quote, so what? Don't boo. <laughs> if Donald Trump does not care that a mob might attack his own vice president, do you think he cares about you? I think that's a very deft way of bringing up 
the democracy stuff, which <laughs> I am sorry, friends. Nobody who's a real voter seems to care about. Good luck, America. But this is a way of talking about it that maybe will connect with people. Um, and, you know, he, t he talked about prices being too high, you know, which is, again, I, I chafe at this a little bit because I, I want to say real wage growth has surpassed inflation for like 24 straight months, people. But, you know, nobody wants to hear that. But what he does is he says prices are too high. But who do you think is going to do something about it? Trump or, or Kamala, right? And he, and he did talk about four more years of Trump, which is a way of reminding people that it's like we have done this before. You know, it's it's not like, hey, we could just take a flyer and maybe everything will be good again. Like, you know, maybe we'll try this guy out. No, we've we've done it already. Um, I, you know, the most the most interesting thing is the extent to which he was willing to call out men and especially African-American men. And this is so before, I don't know if you saw this, uh, AB, but at a stop before this, um, I'm just going to quote from the pool report because I don't think we have video of it. Obama said, and you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. And I've got a problem with that. He's talking about for not voting for Harris because part of me makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly. Part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president, and you're coming up with other alternatives and reasons for that. The women in our lives have been getting our backs this entire time. When we get in trouble and the system isn't working for us, they're the ones out there marching and protesting. And now you're thinking about sitting out or supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a sign of strength, because that's what being a man is, putting women down. That's not acceptable. I don't know if that is a winning message, but it is a very satisfying moral message for Barack Obama to right. be to be yeah. saying, I think. I, Do you I was just gonna say that I like it, but I don't know how much it works. Just as you and I think the only reason to vote for Harris has to be a two month coup that ended in a failed insurrection. <laughs> right. And died. no one cares about that. Um, and nobody cares. What I would like, so right after he used that Mike Pence line, which I thought was excellent. Yeah. If he doesn't care about his vice president, why, whose life is at stake, if life is so threatened, why is he going to care about you? The next line was, they won't be focused, Harris and Waltz, on their problems. They'll be focused on yours. We need a president who actually cares about solving problems and making your life better. And that's what Kamala Harris will do. There must be a way to go at Young men, African-American men, Latino men who are moving to Trump, if you're Obama, and sort of thread those two things together where you don't say, oh, or you just you just can't be a man and vote for a woman. But you sort of say, you guys know, like you think he's tough and you think you remember things costing less. I'll tell you why, you know, and then you go. But really, you know, deep down that Trump thinks about himself, you know, he does. And you know he's not focused on your problems. And just get more aggressive with that message because, as you said, they've clearly tested it. It does. It must be working. I think it's I think it's powerful. And I like when she talks about his rallies. I just love when she says, oh, no, you're going to hear him talk. He's never going to talk about you. He's going to talk about himself. And I think if Obama can find a way to sort of get at those Trump-tempted men and say, come on, guys you know deep down he's full of hot air. Um, it would be a little more effective with that and probably. So the closing message for Kamala Harris is uh, he's not for you. The closing message for the Trump campaign, here I'm just going to quote to you from <laughs> the Detroit Economic Forum today. Yeah, I'm just reading the transcript. These things were coming, cylinders, no wings, no nothing, and they're coming down very slowly, landing on a raft in the middle of the ocean, someplace with a circle. Reminded me of the Biden circles that he used to have. Then I heard we lost. These things were coming, cylinders, no wings, no nothing, and they're coming down very slowly, landing on a raft in the middle of the ocean, someplace with a circle. Boom. Reminded me of the Biden circles that he used to have, right? He'd have eight circles and he couldn't fill them up. 
But then I heard he beat us with the popular vote. I, I don't know. I don't know. Couldn't fill up the eight circles. I always loved those circles. They were so beautiful. So, uh, you know, I'm really glad that he's got a little two point bump in the Michigan and Pennsylvania polls. That really I'm sure that this message is what had put people over the top. They were waiting to see where he was on cylinders. And, uh, you know, now that they've heard it, the great and good American people are ready to make up their mind. I, I want to point out something, A.B., and this doesn't have anything to do with anything except for psychology. Um, something happened, something very small, but is, you know, if you go to a bunch of these rallies, you see it happen from time to time. Somebody who is like on the stage or near the candidate as part of the audience will faint or fall over. And this happens all the time, not because it's like the Beatles, but because you, you got to be to these rallies, I you know. know, two hours beforehand. You're standing there. Sometimes it's hot. Sometimes it's cold. Sometimes you get low blood sugar. I mean, it just it happens. This happened to uh, at at the Obama rally, and it happened to J.D. Vance today. And I want to again. I just want to. This is the dumbest, littlest thing, but it highlights something so visceral that I think it people want to so pay much. attention to it. Right. So with Obama, Obama just sort of notes it's happening. He's like, hey, I think somebody's fainting up here. Um, you know, don't worry. This is a thing that happens. Please make room for the, you know, EMTs. They'll come get you. Everybody else, make sure you, you know, bend your knees, drink your water. You know, it's- this happens sometimes. Everybody bend their knees a little bit. You've been standing for a while. You can dance if you want. I just suggest to bend your knees. Again, this is like this is just the most normal human thing in the world. When it happened to J.D. Vance today, someone fell over and J.D. Vance sort of gets up and looks and he says, Kamala Harris built this platform behind us. That's what happened. Kamala Harris built this platform behind us. That's what happened. Yeah. Dude, are you even a fucking real human being? No. I don't even know. (laughs) No. He's so into being a prick and he thinks that the audience loves that. So that's his, his first response. He doesn't even hold back. And he really thinks he's cute when he does it. And it, it is, um, it's just who he is. And, and, and he really thinks, he thinks every voter that's going to decide this election, swing voter, is like Don Jr. That's, that's what he thinks. And the holdouts who, he, who they need to come and put them over the top or that person, or listens to Don Jr. on Rumble, or whatever the hell. Um, and it, and the thing about Trump at the Economic Club is one of his worst meltdowns recently when he was the most incoherent was at the Manhattan, the New York Economic Club. Mm-hmm. And I like that this happens. The people in the audience don't want his across-the-board tariffs, and they want their tax cuts. So they have to sit there and listen to him sound like the most drunken, incoherent, really cognitively damaged human being, and then clap and (laughs) suck it up and go out and tell our friends why it works and why he has to have their support. He, I mean, he's, it was beyond belief. I actually played it at some point. I watched it. And he was really into this Biden circles (laughs) <laughs> I mean, JVL, there's just no way. It's almost like it's a bit. It's almost like he's putting these business people up. He's like, these guys are such suckers that himself. I can say anything and they'll just clap for me because they have to. Watch. Have I'll to. say the stupidest fucking thing you can imagine. And these seals are going to clap for me because I they know I'll give them tax cuts. It's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. I, uh, You know what, AB, though? There's some good news in all this. If America votes for this guy and puts him back into power, it won't be an accident. It won't be because, well, they felt really reassured by his vice president because he picked the super normie, nice guy right. who everybody thought will be a check on him. It won't be because he, you know, he ran a really disciplined campaign and, you know, he, he made it look like he was going to be normal. And <laughs> like this has been a this has been a shit show. Basically, well, since Biden left the race, yeah, and Kamala Harris has played not perfect baseball, but close to perfect baseball, about as close as any presidential campaign can reasonably hope to to do. 
And Trump has shown America exactly who and what he is. And if America chooses him, that's on us. Hey, B, thanks for being with us. Guys, we got four weeks left. Follow the channel. Stay with us. Let's run through the tape together. Good luck, America.